Hello, hello, watercolor card artists. I'm here with some really good ideas on how to add snow to a background. I have three different types of ways that I like to add white to my background for cards. Uh, so let's get started because there's three different ways and I think you're really going to hopefully enjoy the process. Uh, but first I'm going to, I didn't realize how wet and dirty my towel was. So um, I'm going to change this up a little bit and get that all cleaned up. <laughs> I'm just there. Voila, done, clean. All right, so for the first one that I like to do is, I don't know if you guys use masking fluid. I've always been so afraid of using masking fluid, but masking fluid is my best friend. And I use masking fluid all the time, literally all the time. So I wanted to show you how I like to use masking fluid first, because that's going to kind of change everything up. Uh, I am going to just do a quick little demo on masking fluid and that will help you I think so I use Peebo drying gum it's liquid uh, frisket or latex it's really just liquid latex you can add water to it if it gets thick you can add water to it I've added I've had this since uh, I want to say 2019 which sounds about right <laughs> it feels like a long four years but um here's what the fluid looks like and there's and it will totally you can just add but if you don't want to so you can just add it to the paper and it will it won't let the watercolor get onto the paper it'll mask it however um i'm using a very cheap craft brush and I, this is my masking fluid brush it's 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 perfect for it so what i like to do is I'll, I have some soap in here. You probably can't tell, but there's some, there's like dish soap on here that I just put in. You don't need like hardly at all any, but you want to coat the bristles with soap. That's gonna like repel the, the drying gum, the masking fluid. And then I'm just gonna splatter masking fluid onto my paper. And then I get this really fun little speckled look and then I can let it dry. So if I were to make card panels, like a couple of card panels, I would maybe have like six of these ready and just splatter, splatter, splatter. And I got a bunch of different little um, uh, like specks, right? Like they're not all the same size and they're all different. Uh, yeah, you can see. So, and now I can just let it dry. It's going to take, I don't know, 10-ish probably minutes. And then I clean off my brush really good and water that is just for masking fluid. So you can kind of see it. But I have two things of water. Uh, this is my masking fluid water. When I'm all done with masking fluid, I take it out. I don't want anything to touch my, I don't want the latex to touch my brush. And I don't want the latex to touch my clean water because it could get on my brush and then ruin my brush. And sometimes my brushes are really expensive. So I this is just my dedicated masking fluid water cup thing. It's, it's totally different. A friend gave it to me and she's like, I don't know what you would do with it. I'm like, oh, it's my masking fluid jar <laughs> and that's what I and it's just for water and it's cloudy now but um now my brush is clean and I can get on with my life and I'll do, I use um masking fluid a lot of my florals too when I want to preserve the the highlights of a petal uh so that's what I do anyways that's how masking fluid works I'm gonna put that stuff away so this is one and we're not we're this is just the beginning this is the hardest part is waiting for it to dry because of course you want to play with it right away all right so the next one that i like to do is i'm going to paint a background and it's going to be pretty pretty dark and i'm probably going to have some really purples but let's get some watercolor going and I'm going to spray down my palette. This is a palette that I made. And it has all the fun colors that I love in this little palette. So I can use it. 
I, I can just pack it in my bag. It folds up really nice and small. Um, and I just, I can take it with me wherever I go. And I just love this palette. So anyways, um, I've had this palette for about a year now. It's been a year since I curated it. And it is my favorite. But I am going to... use a much bigger brush <laughs> this is a size 8 neptune brush it's a it's it's my favorite i love this brush so much uh and well i'll show you another so this i'll show you two other techniques because i gotta paint lots of skies and i'm happy to show you all my tricks all right so i'm gonna get some purple going and i am just painting the sky very loosely it's going to be very, very dark when I'm done. And I might have to use a couple layers. Usually, I do. Like, this is just the beginning. But I want to get color on. I might have to add some more indigo. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. But indigo and purple really work well together. Uh, you can also add some phthalo turquoise or thalo blue if you have that we'll go ahead and add that in we're gonna have to add a whole bunch of colors to make it happen but this is a start anyways let's add some fresh indigo I use indigo all the time um, I love it for greens I love it for see I, it's a great landscape color if you don't have indigo I totally recommend it all right and I just use dick blick indigo if you have questions feel free to uh, ask them I'm an open book but yes the paper curls I'm using 140 watercolor paper so it is thick enough but it's just the size of it if I was painting a bigger uh, picture a bigger paper I would not have this problem all right I just squeezed some fresh indigo on and look at how thick that is it's gonna look beautiful there is nothing better than fresh paint off the tube okay I'm gonna leave that alone I'm probably gonna have to come back to it again but we'll let that dry <laughs> we'll see uh, all right so on to the next one all right these t i'm gonna actually gonna give you two more ideas um this one i heat embossed i don't know if you can really tell you probably can't but yeah you can kind of see um so i heat embossed um snowflakes i stamped them with like a versamark ink added heat embossing powder to it and so now the heat embossing powder will resist it. And I used a white shimmery one. So it should look really cool. Uh, and I'm going to start with purple. Because me and purple, you know. And it just resists already. It's super fast. Uh, the hardest part is the planning of it. Um, but we already kind of, you know, if I always say with watercolor, if you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. Because... With watercolor, you almost always need a plan. But I can just paint. And it's already, I mean, you, you don't have to do much. The stamp did most of the work. And then you, when you uh, embossed it, you know. And, but So there's another way to preserve the whites is just use a stamp and use embossing powder. And then you can add whatever colors you want to it. I love indigo for, for... For a snow screen. You can also add, again, I'm going to use some phthalo turquoise. Get some of that pretty frosty color going. And I would just add more to it in a little bit. Um, which I will. But you want the first layer to be dry before you add more. But I can add pretty dark right there. Yep, and you can see it just resists it. So that's really fun to play with. You can always kind of make almost like a border. And then you might have a spot right here to add your sentiment if you wanted. Um, you can add, let's see, let's add some ultramarine maybe to the phthalo. 
And there's a little bit of thing, a little turquoise right there, so I'm going to put some right here too, just to kind of balance out. But that's going to look really pretty and really dark. Maybe I will zoom in a bit more. Let's focus. There we go. So that looks really awesome. And then there's one more that I wanted to show you, and then hopefully the masking fluid will be pretty dry. And if not, then we'll come back and do another thing. <laughs> Sometimes I have to dig through my children's art supplies. When I say sometimes, it's I'm going to be for real. I let my children use my art supplies, and then I have to go find them again. This is a white crayon. This is actually did come from a white crayon, like a crayon box, and I just always steal their white crayons because what else are you going to do with them, right? Um, so this is just a wax resist, and you can just kind of go in, make some dots. There's, I'm not, no rhyme or reason. I don't know, maybe we need some bigger ones, some smaller ones. And you can always kind of move around your paper and see where you've put marks at. It's not going to be perfect. Like you're not going to be able to see everything, but you should be able to see a little bit. And then why not just, let's just make a snowscape. And then I'm, I don't, you never know how the color is going to work until you, but I just made a simple line and now I'm just kind of coloring it in. I don't know if I would rec I don't know. I'm, this is me playing. So I'm hopeful that it'll look really good. Um, if not, then, you know, it was worth a shot. But I do know that white will resist the paper. So now we can go in and kind of see. And again, I'm loving the night sky of um, indigo. So let's, let's just bring it on. Huh? Oh, yeah, that's going to look quite pretty, I think. A little bit different and so that's really fun and now that there's kind of like this wash on here I'm gonna go all the way down because I do think that the snow makes it a little bit you know like the snow is still has some color to it but now you can go back in and really add your frosty night sky and this is a pretty thick mix I would say this is like a buttery um, or straight from the tube mix so I do have water on the paper so that's why it's kind of pushing around but there we go oh my gosh how pretty are those little dots uh, you can also use stencils uh, like I instead of stamps you could use stencils that would look really fun I'm gonna add some of this purple because you know I can't have just one color gonna have a whole bunch of color and maybe I really really like the idea of this contrast right here that's looking quite lovely there now I think I could add some really fun stamps or illustration to this and make it look quite lovely so there's another option with just a white crayon and all I did was just mark it I didn't really think about it but my goodness it's super pretty I'm wondering how much if there's any other nope I think I colored most of it <laughs> with a white crayon I love it that's looking really pretty this almost reminds me of like something in the background but there you go you so you could do snow with um, uh, with a white crown and then just draw a bottom and then you could even once this dries I think I might just go in with indigo and paint a couple trees and call that good I would not be able to stamp over the wax but you could do like a you could do like a little sentiment strip or something I don't know it'll be fun to see um, okay so there's that one um, okay so this one this one is almost dry uh, let's put another layer on it because I really want to show you guys the f the like the aha factor of of how like whenever I want to do a snow scene I'm always thinking okay I need like two or three layers 
and wherever there's already paint I'm just this is very thick 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 like almost you could almost call this like too, like straight from the tube thick it is really thick stuff but it's still watercolor so it still blends quite lovely but I'm it's more of a dry brush so if you are an acrylic painter this might be right up your alley and I added some of that phthalo turquoise so we're gonna add that in I'm gonna add some more of that purple add that right in through here I would say that this is a pretty dark scene um, and I really don't I, I actually quite love it it's it's a bit darker than um, that's exactly what I'm going for if I wanted to I just have a little bit of water I might just add some of that and then just let it kind of run because I don't want it to look I don't want it to look hard. I like the texture but that might have just killed a little bit we'll see yep that's all right I did not I haven't killed it yet I'm just I don't want all the texture in um, so I'm just gonna add it back some pigment there that's gonna work it's just a background I feel like the more I fuss with it sometimes the the worse it gets so I'm liking it it's it's perfect and I'm gonna let it be okay same thing with this so this I would just add another background to it And I'm just, I'm looking to see if you guys have any questions. All right. If you do have questions, let me know. I'd love to answer them. Uh, the one thing I love about watercolors, the translucency, and I can see it happening. I just love, I just love painting <laughs> the dark sky because it, watercolor just makes it so unbelievable fun. I'm going to add a whole bunch of purpley purples right in here. Right in here. And then I'm going to go in with my phthalo right in here. And then I'm going to go back in with my indigo. Just to give it a whole lot of pretty texture. There we go. I'm liking that. Now, I'm going to let that one get set. And there we got the bright, bright whites against the dark. Uh, so I always love using resist because you get that, you really get a good, you get a good, uh, oh, result usually when you do resist either with embossing powder or with a crayon. But look at that. I mean, it looks like a landscape and it's just beautiful. So let's go back in here. Um, I'm going to add some more of that purple. When I don't know what I want to do, I sit and I look a little bit. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit more before I decide what I want to do. And I'm going to dry, let that dry. This one's done. All I have to do is add a sentiment and I think I'll call that one done. Now, this one is not, this one, the, the masking fluid is almost dry. You know when it's dry when you can touch it and it doesn't come off, off your fingers. However, that one is not quite dry. That one is dry. I doubt that one's dry. It's not. Uh, so, we got, I'm gonna, don't try this at home. <laughs> um, it's uh, It's pretty dry. It's not completely dry. So, I'll keep letting that dry just a little bit. Like I said, masking fluid, I think works really well, except for when you want it to dry fast. So, I'm gonna just paint a quick pine tree or two I think I want one maybe about right here so I'm just gonna take my indigo and I might actually tint it with some undersea green which I'm almost out of I'll be surprised if I can actually get enough and then I'm just gonna mix the undersea green the undersea green with my indigo and this is just gonna be a quick little like triangle tree
I love painting pine trees. They're just making my heart so happy. I just commented today on someone's post on like what you know what can I do to paint a quick Christmas card scene and I said oh just do pine trees you know you can you know practice your pine trees with Christmas cards that's what I did one year and I have I got so many compliments from those cards like oh my gosh those pine trees are so pretty oh thanks <laughs> they didn't know they were practice cards they didn't need to know and then I'm just going to add a little bit of indigo wherever I think needs it. This one's looking more like a triangle than a tree. And I always like to do, th you know, three trees. So but this one's going to be tall and, and not as... Not as thick. But if you need a dark green, I always add indigo. There. I'm kind of liking that. So there's my three trees. You can kind of maybe add, you know, just a little bit of that shadow down. It's it's a resist, so it's not going to work perfectly. But there's the three. there. So there's that one. I think that one's about done. I don't know what else I can do with it. Um, I might. I had some green left over on my brush just because I can. If I can finish that here just to give it a little bit of a look but there we go there's that one that one looks awesome okay now for the masking this is going to be a pretty thick indigo and I might actually have to use some more indigo I used it all I'm going to spray my watercolor panel and just let the indigo just go wild I'm going to need some more and I'm actually going to put this on the paper. Why not? Ooh, isn't that pretty? Oh, so pretty. I love indigo. I could... I think indigo has... I, I used to not like indigo because of its being so dark, but I didn't know how to use it. And I didn't play with it as much as I should have. And now that I played with it, I'm like, oh, give me some of that indigo color because it's so pretty. Should be using my bigger brush. <laughs> that would probably help speed the process along. Okay. I'm curious, how are you enjoying the card group? Are you learning a lot? Is there stuff that you wanted to learn? Um, that we haven't covered. I'm always looking for ideas on demos and card classes. I started up a card class this month. was my first month of doing card classes and it went quite well. I am hopeful to get more students so if you are new to card making or watercolor uh, message me. I'm quite approachable and I would love to um, pick you up with my email list, but I'm just adding on, I'm just adding pigment, <laughs> playing around, you know, half the battle with watercolor is not always about the, I mean, the process is good. Having the, playing with the watercolor is fun. Getting a result is also nice, but it's the process that keeps people coming back. And I, my style is very much more loose and fluid than tight and, and just perfect. But that's pretty dark. I'm afraid if I go much darker, I'm not going to be able to, I'm going to lose the, the beauty of watercolor. So I'm going to leave that alone. And this one is done. I'm going to call this one pretty much dry. Could be drier I know so you can use gouache or titanium white uh, gouache has titanium white in into it uh, both of these are opaque meaning they're not translucent so they're perfect to use for 
for snow. Um, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to put gouache in this little thing where my soap was in for the masking fluid. I'm just going to clean that up. This is like my little, I don't know, it goes to the jar of my masking fluid. But I just use it for all sorts of little things. Okay, I got my well-loved toothbrush right here. And I'm going to put in just a teeny bit of wash. I don't need a whole lot. Now you could use splatter. That's probably more than enough wash, but oh well. I'll just use it for other snow scenes that I might or may or may not do. <laughs> I, I never like to waste pigment, but sometimes I think you have to. Anyways, all right. I can put this back on here. Someone says that if you put Vaseline on the on the tube, like on the side of the tube, it's easier to um, get your your thing on and off, your cat, your lid on and off. I don't know if that's actually true. If you've tried that, I'd love to know. Anyways. Okay, I'm going to get this wet a little bit and then dry it off and then I'm just going to dip my toothbrush into here and then I'm just going to speckle it and it just gives it a really nice little bit of snow. You can kind of see it almost looks like a blizzard. Very light mist of snow but you could also take your brush now and make sure it's clean and then dried pretty pretty well so there it's 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 a dry brush and but there's still enough water to just add bigger snowflakes so now i have two different um i have that mist of snow and then i have like splatters now i can let that dry and then when I'll show you what I do when I'm done with that. But that is a pretty cool snow background, I think. All right, this is probably not dry enough for me to take off the masking. So I'll show you how I would finish this off in just a second. I got like inky fingers and stuff. So I'll be right back with, a, with clean your fingers. All right, now I could, I really actually like this blue. It works kind of well with that blue. So I can go ahead and these are called, these, what I'm showing you are called simple strips. And what they, they are from Tailored Expressions website and they are stamp. So you can, you stamp this like five by seven stamp. It comes with a whole bunch of different sentiments and then you die cut them so you need a Sizzix you need the stamp the die cut the Sizzix and then you can and then they come up with these little you, you cut them out and you get these little strips and they are fantastic I just love them and so that's that's these are the product of the stamp and the die cut <laughs> a little bit there's a little bit of work to it but it's worth, the, those strips are worth its weight in gold, usually. And I have some foam adhesive strips. And I usually like to just cut them, but I might just tear them off. But, oh, so I'll just tear off a bit of the strip like that. I can put that right here. Maybe I could make it a lot straighter, huh? There. And so this one says, Walking in a Winter Wonderland. And I'm going to put that one right up here, just 
like that. I like to center mine. It's almost centered. That's probably a bit more centered. Not as straight as I would like it. There. Walking in Winter Wonderland. And then may your season sparkle. And you can get all of this on the Taylor's web the Tailored Expressions website. And then there's this strip. And I'll just put that one right there. I think I will add there. And then if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of sparkles here and there, but the embossing has the sparkles. So it makes for a really easy, fun card. I hope you give that one a try. That one is really fun. This one, this one is pretty much dry. We got some major snowy print stuff. So what I like to do, this is so fun, um, is I got these die cuts. I don't want, I have better sizes. Let me see if I can't find them. Maybe not. Ah, right here. Maybe. Mm -mm. Well, I did have, ah, they're right here. I have, so I can put this one right here, actually, yeah, and then maybe this one right here, and I would trim up a little bit, but you can kind of see how even with just some simple die cuts, you can make some really cute backgrounds and cards. Um, in fact, maybe I would even, if it was me, um, which I would put some mounting um, bone strips here and then foam right here. And then the other fun thing that you can do is I have this iridescent white coarse pearl medium pan pastels. It is quite lovely to add to your watercolor paper. So this is the little applicator. I could also just go in here and add some sparkles if I wanted to. But I was thinking to add just the white, just to glisten up the trees a bit. So it looks like a pearly paper almost. That would look Quite lovely. Oh yeah, it looks snowy. So I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it is glistening. <laughs> and then I would go and do the... Yeah, that's really pretty. And then there we go. I would just do that right here like this. Maybe cut it. Maybe add this in the background as well. And then you have quite a lovely card. Isn't that fun? Um, so there's that idea too. That's a that's an easy fun way. I love adding gouache to my backgrounds for snow. If you are yeah, yeah, and you can always I see a little tidbit thing that I don't love for the splatter so what I could do is clean my brush and because it's opaque it doesn't stain you can just kind of um I'm going to get a Kleenex or a paper towel so you dabbed it up and then you can just blot it blot it out so there's that. I think that's going to look quite lovely. Okay, let's see if the masking is dried up. It is not. Um, it is dried up enough. What happens if you don't dry, the, if the paper is not completely dry when you take masking off, is it, it, it 
the masking will come up with the paper but because I am using little snow like little block drops I think it'll be okay but be careful when you remove masking fluid and it's not completely dry um, so there's a nice little snowy background as well and this is I don't know if I would control it more control but it it's definitely more stark so if it is too stark for you you can go in with a wet brush and just kind of smooth out some of the edges so it's not so stark and maybe you like the starkness like that one probably needs to but there you go and you got another fun layer of snowy background you could use stencils the same way uh, you could use stamps with the snowflakes but there's lots of ways to get the to get what you want accomplished uh, if you didn't love the crayon uh, which I think actually turned out quite lovely um, the masking is also a great choice so anyways there was those those four examples of winter backgrounds Hopefully will help you guys in your Christmas cards. I'd love to know which one you like the best. Um, I know you can't really see it, but man, that that pearl pastel stuff. Oh, it's like it's like making my heart happy, man. <laughs> I don't know. And this one's always so much fun. I always love doing resist. Um, so, anyways, I'd love to know what your favorite one is, and if you have any questions or if you like these tutorials, I'd love to know. Um, I want to keep doing them because I love you guys and I love the group. Uh, so give me your ideas. Give me, hey, I really want to know how to paint whatever. Um, I'm learning right along with you. So it's fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy your comments. I enjoy your questions. So keep posting and um, being kind to each other. I love this group because we're so kind to each other. So Anyways, I will talk to you guys later and enjoy some painting this weekend, I hope.